name is Dr. Martha Matashu. I am a senior lecturer in accounting, and I'm also a director in the School of Commerce and Social Studies in Education at Northwest University in the Faculty of Education at Mahigan Campus. I am one of the co-editors to the book entitled Quality Education, the nexus between human capital development, economic growth, and social justice. I co-edited the book with Professor Muchatufugwa Libatuhowe, who is a professor in the School of Languages in the Faculty of Education at the Northwest University. We conceptualized the book cover from the Greek mythology where Prometheus defied Zeus by stealing fire from the gods of Olympus and giving this to wretched mankind who was bathed by the cold. This fire set mankind free as they could warm themselves and fashion implements to provide for their lives. This was refined in the graphics to privilege the skills of blind lady justice in perfect size to the flame of wisdom and knowledge that is set in South Africa. In this cover, we troubled how knowledge is generated and disseminated, asking ourselves to become Southern scholars engaged in voicing agents and the experiential and therefore contributors at the forge of knowledge making. The final colorful college we have for the book cover is indeed a masterful design that projects in visual form the recurrent motive of social justice imperative through the provision of quality education. The contribution of the book to new knowledge arises from the fact that it investigates the intersection between education, social justice, gendered violence, and human rights in schools in South Africa and in South African universities. The scholarship in the chapters challenges researchers, practitioners, and readers to imagine alternative features predicted on the transformational capacity of a democratic South Africa. Part one of the book is made up of three chapters that conceptualizes quality education for the ends of social justice. In the first three chapters, Martha Matashu and Mchatu Fuga Libat Hove teases out recent developments in pedagogical theory and practice in order to map what emerges as culturally and politically sustaining pedagogy. The focus in this part spans the fields of education economics, human capital, and the imperative of social justice is countenanced through theoretical, interdisciplinary methodological, and research-based initiatives. In chapter one, I explored quality education as instrumental for the foundational development of human capabilities necessary for economic growth and social justice. Drawing on principles at theories in education, human capital development, and economics discipline, I argued that education facilitates social justice by ensuring the development of each student's intrinsic human capabilities and enabling them to lead productive lives in serving individual needs and those of the society. In the second chapter, Professor Hove proposes that the nexus between quality education, human capital and economic growth as alternative approaches to social justice requires that they be palatable intersection of educational processes and practices that accentuate quality education. He examines epistemic disobedience and social justice where the quest for curriculum renewal is linked to the relevance in one South African university. As such, the multidimensional nexus perspective explain 
what it takes to achieve quality education and social justice. The three chapters therefore focus on developing a conceptual grounding for social and epistemic social justice for quality education, arguing that quality education is located at the nexus of social justice, economic and human capital development. Part two is made up of four chapters that are essentially empirical, exploring the complex and multidimensional empirical studies that demonstrate quality education in different practices. The chapters in this segment present empirical studies on educational practice that could foster attainment of quality education. The empirical evidence from these educational practices interrogates quality education in terms of the development of skills and competencies that contribute to human capital and economic growth. Once human capital and economic growth are achieved, they stimulate economic development, and this in turn capitalizes the social justice imperative. As such, Dr. Mulambo and Professor Patient Lambe in chapter four conceptualizes the effect of personal epistemological beliefs on pedagogical use of ICTs. The text and learning materials used in learning could be contested sources of engaging gender biases, prejudices, inequalities, thus creating epistemic and social justices. To clarify the discrimination and exclusion embedded within learning materials, Professor Mchatufuga Hove draws attention to the need to disrupting patriographies in classroom by deconstructing gendered construction in South African language text. In the next chapter, Professor Dudu and Dr. Samuel investigate the challenges and imperatives of pedagogical content using the case of natural science teachers in South Africa. In the next chapter, Dr. Kunene Notile and Professor Norwood write on the use of argument frames for solving problems in mathematics in primary schools. In the chapter, they argue that supporting primary school children, mathematical knowledge intersect with their language development. In particular, students' understanding of arguments and how these work in restructuring mathematical logic. In the last part of the book, part three is conveniently placed at the end of the research-based book for the development of frameworks for quality education, developing educational processes and frameworks for implementing quality education in schools, anchors human capital building, economic growth, and subsequently realization of social justice. Understanding quality education from systemic and social justice approaches recognizes quality education as context specific. This section presents conceptual studies that focus on developing frameworks for quality education within social justice imperative. These frameworks highlight different educational processes practices and relationship that ultimately promote quality education outcomes by learners, such as an understanding of micro -found foundational elements of education inputs, processes and outcomes that exert an impact on learner skills and knowledge has direct influence on the social justice imperative. In this regard, Dr. Andrew Muchangwa examines the relationship between science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, education, and economic growth. Dr. Petz and Dr. Professor Nell takes a shot at the school level and proposes 
a classroom condition model that enhance learner attainment of quality educational outcomes in accounting education. At the level of school management and leadership, Asan, Matashu, and Nusu submit that education inputs and processes exert influence on the provision of quality education. And that is the final chapter. This final chapter in the edited volume develops a framework for strengthening instructional leadership practices and improved learner attainment in schools. This edited volume presents a research-based contribution designed to address some troubling concerns regarding South African constitution that is regarded by many as the most progressive constitution in the world yet the citizens of the country still struggles to come to terms with these issues including race ethnicity gender sexual orientation se social sorry social economic status age physical abilities religious political beliefs and or any other ideologies added to this is the quality and inequality and lack of quality education that denies the majority of South Africans the chance to become valued citizens who contributes to the realization of their constitutional aspiration. How will this book uh, benefit the scholarly readers? This book presents theoretical, conceptual and empirical insights into the deontological role for education, creating, promoting and sustaining human capital development and encouraging economic growth through achieving quality education. The chapters of this book, therefore, falls within the domain of moral theory, which guide and assess choices as to what we ought to do, that is deontology, in contrast to those which guide and assess what kind of people we are. We seek the chapters assembled here as patented to interrogate all the educational principles that flow from these ideals and all those practices that flow from these principles. Quality education for all, academic freedom, pedagogical pluralism, epistemic diversity, and institutional diversity, where in a humanistic framework, which involves agents, dignity, and development, which is underpinned on ideals, such as the rights and democracy, which is founded on principles, such as equity, inclusion, and justice, and based on practices such as lifelong learning for all and a voice become the critical terminus adequium. As Professor Conley, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Education at the Northwest University, aptly observed in the preface of the book, the challenges posed by COVID-19 to the education domains once again became the forefront in highlighting and heightening the existing disparities, making more urgent the need to regaze at the soul of social economic inequalities. And have also heightened the agency to develop the available resources, including human capital, to achieve the goal of social justice, that is deontic theory. Furthermore, the pandemic highlighted the importance of a full and economic participation and growth. This book should be read as one seamless essay that urgently calls for specific reforms such as quality education in addressing sustained human capital development and economic growth. 
the publication of this book is a, an opportunity and it will not contribute to the existing board of knowledge, but will also raise the importance question that may lead to new understanding and challenges, the ways in which we approach education in spite and beyond the pandemic. Thank you so much um, for this privilege to make a presentation about our book. Thank you.